what you are currently watching was made by people working on the Netflix live action Avatar series. More specifically, this tall short film is a concept piece created by the Netflix show's stunt team in their free time. So to be very clear, this is not actual footage from the upcoming show, and this tall actress will not make an appearance. But the people fighting in this video who did the choreography, they are the exact same ones who are working on the real thing. This guy is Leslie Kwan, one of the main stunt coordinators for the new Avatar live action. And here he is again, demonstrating his kung fu with a staff and a bald head, looking suspiciously like an airbender. But we'll get back to Leslie later. I shared those videos because I think they're indicative of something bigger, something way bigger. The live action Avatar The Last Airbender remake that's coming to Netflix sometime soon this year. People say that live action adaptations don't work, that they can't work, and Avatar fans especially have already been burned once before, badly, so it's foolish to have hope again, right? Well, no, not at all, because this time it's gonna be different. This time, the live action Avatar adaptation is going to look great, it's going to look breathtaking even, it's going to look way better than the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm gonna prove it. In this video, I'll show you leaked set photos, including your first look at the Aang actor's live action arrow tattoos. I'm also gonna uncover the lead costume designer's Pinterest account, and this sus photo album that's called Character Inspiration. We'll talk about the cast, of course, and how they're being trained by the same guy who designed Chong Chi's fight scenes. And then finally, I'll showcase the industry leading VFX studios and the record breaking technologies that are currently bringing the Avatar world to life. I know we all have post Shyamalan stress disorder that gets triggered by live action adaptations, but this video is therapy and it's going to help the fan base move forward. So subscribe if at any point you appreciate the depths that I've gone with this. It's free and 98% of you aren't subbed right now, which is fake friend behavior. And thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video, more on them later. To get started, I first have to make sure we're all on the same page about the scope and the ambition of Netflix's Avatar adaptation. $120 million. That is the confirmed budget for the first season, making this show one of the most expensive ever produced in television history. $15 million per episode puts this Avatar series above the likes of Game of Thrones, Star Wars, and The Boys. Really the only productions that have a beat are the Marvel Disney Plus shows, Stranger Things Season 4, and Amazon's Rings of Power. Avatar was a Nickelodeon cartoon. Why in the world is Netflix shelling out such big bucks for this upcoming remake? Well, according to Netflix's VP of Original Programming, Matt Thanell, it's because Avatar has the potential to become Netflix's biggest future franchise. In an interview from last July, he explained that since Netflix's biggest show, Stranger Things, was coming to an end, the company's top priority was identifying shows that could fill the gap. They came up with only three possible options, the Avatar live action, the One Piece live action, and an adaptation of the Three Body Problem, which is apparently China's best-selling sci-fi novel. Put simply, Netflix believes that out of its hundreds of properties, this live action Avatar remake has the best chance of becoming the next Stranger Things. And honestly, they have pretty solid evidence to back that claim up. When the 15-year-old Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon hit Netflix in 2020, it was an instant hit, breaking Netflix's viewership records and becoming the 11th most popular show for that entire year. And that's why Netflix is now doubling down with a massive live action production. They are quite literally giving Avatar the Stranger Things treatment. They want it to succeed as much as we do, or probably even more because it's their stock price that's at stake. That's a really, really special project because I feel like it's like your Asian American Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. Like, it's a big show, a very big mm -hmm. show. Peter Friedlander, another top Netflix exec, did an interview with the Emmys last year where he randomly brought up Stranger Things and Avatar as examples of spectacle TV, which he described as, quote, a hybrid of incredibly visually stunning work married with long form storytelling. And Avatar must be living rent free because he brought it up again just a few weeks ago, saying, It's pretty special. Just as an IP, it's very special. And we want to handle it with deft hands for the fans and to also bring new life to it in a way that that both honors the original and celebrates its new iteration. It's a stunning spectacle. These shows are very big productions, and it takes a ton of time both on the production side and in post, so you have to respect the long journey for some of these shows to deliver what hasn't been done on television before. Whether it's Avatar or One Piece or Three Body Problem, these are big visual spectacles that you have to honor the process and respect that when you're on the visual vanguard of storytelling, it takes trial, error, and time to get right. But that's the intent. That's the hope that you're bringing eye candy matched with impeccable storytelling 
selling into these worlds. Now, before you say who cares about some random execs rambles, you should know that Peter Friedlander is Netflix's head of scripted series. The only person above him is the CEO, proving that Avatar is a number one priority for the company's top decision makers. This isn't some throwaway project like those Cowboy Bebop or Death Note adaptations. Avatar is in much better hands. All of us who worked on this program are fans of the original animated show, including all the executives at Netflix. And now with Netflix hyping up their live action Avatar as the visual vanguard of storytelling, let's briefly take a look at Marvel and how the state of their VFX became akin to a train crashing in poorly rendered slow motion. 2022 was a rough year for Marvel. Not only did the oversaturation of mid-MCU projects finally start affecting their audience turnout, but the company suffered from an ongoing PR nightmare as they faced public backlash from their own VFX partners. Hating on the MCU also became mainstream last year, so I want to make it clear that this is not one of those videos. I'm still on the Marvel bandwagon, and I'm actually one of the few people I know who is still fully caught up with every single MCU project, even She-Hulk. So it's with all the love in the world when I say that Marvel, you can do better than this. I mentioned before that MCU shows are among the only ones ever made with higher budgets than Netflix's Avatar live action, and the Marvel movies have even deeper pockets, so why am I so confident in the upcoming Avatar series even when the more expensive MCU has been looking worse and worse? For great visual effects to be fully realized, three things are required, money, time, and planning. While the MCU has no shortage of money, their time has increasingly been dwindling, and their planning needs some work. The main reason that Marvel's VFX artists suddenly turned against them in 2022 is because those people were being overworked and crunched to death. Most superhero projects require hefty amounts of CGI, and Marvel was just dogpiling their workers with more and more and more. What broke the camel's back was all the Disney Plus shows. In one year alone, there are five new MCU shows along with three new movies. With this influx of projects, Marvel completely failed to adjust their workflow. Marvel's VFX artists have reportedly had anxiety attacks due to the sheer pressure, with workers left crying at their desks during months of back-to-back all-night shifts. It's gotten so bad that many effects companies now refuse to work with Marvel at all. On top of having way too many overlapping projects, Marvel is also notorious within the industry for completely changing scenes at the last minute, forcing artists to throw away weeks of work and redoing it. Sometimes, the VFX studios are told to make changes the week of release or even after the movie is already out in theaters. Compare that hellish situation over at Marvel with how the Netflix execs describe Avatar's production, specifically how they called out respecting the long journey to create visually stunning work. It's night and day. Season 1 of Netflix's Avatar has been in production for over 4 years, yet outside of the set photo leaks later in this video, we haven't seen anything from it, even though it's coming out in 2023. To me, this is actually a good sign because it shows that Netflix isn't willing to rush things just to get Avatar trending for a day on Twitter. Netflix has given their Avatar series money and they're giving them time too, so now all that's left in the great visual effects formula is planning, and the Avatar team has exceeded expectations there as well. The volume is the most cutting edge piece of technology currently being used in the film industry, and Avatar's production has the most advanced one ever made. If you don't know what a volume is, it's basically a giant room where the walls and ceiling are seamlessly covered in LED screens. The idea is to replace green screens and instead film inside of the volume, so that the actual environment of a scene can be rendered around the actors during the shoot. And the tech is more than just a bunch of LED screens by the way. There's motion tracking of the camera and they can change the environments in real time, and it's all made in virtual reality and controlled by a video game engine. Just crazy stuff. Christian Bale is one of the most prolific and respected actors in Hollywood, and he was recently in his first Marvel movie, starring as the villain in Thor Love and Thunder. This industry icon's main takeaway from acting on a big budget Marvel set is that it was quote, the definition of monotony. The reason that Marvel is able to get away with changing entire scenes through VFX just days before a project's release is because every MCU project is shot almost entirely on green screens. Christian Bale loves the art form that is acting. He loves diving into a character's ethos and trying to metaphysically enter their reality. Surrounded by Marvel's green screens, Christian was literally at a loss for how to do that. But if he had happened upon Netflix's Avatar set, he would have effortlessly found himself fully immersed within the Four Nations. The volume was first used to shoot The Mandalorian in 2018, and since then it's slowly been expanding to other productions, including those of The Batman, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the upcoming Ant-Man movie, Quantumania. However, the Netflix Avatar series tops all the rest because Avatar's virtual production stage is the largest one on the planet, as certified by Guinness World Records. This is a video of it in action, depicting the interior of a spaceship. Netflix's volume, spanning 22,000 square feet, is almost double the size of the one used for The Mandalorian 
Mandalorian. The original Avatar cartoon is renowned for its beautiful scenery and landscapes, and by leveraging the volume's technology, those same breathtaking backdrops were present on the live-action set right alongside the actors. This is a leaked photo from the set of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender series. Yup, this is your first look at the show, Bask in the Pixelated Glory. This scene seems to depict the Northern Water Tribe, the setting of Season 1's finale. It could also be the Southern Tribe, I guess, but probably not, just there's a lot of ice. You see that giant glacier and the skyline in the background? Yeah, that's the volume. And that's why this virtual production technology is so cool. There's no need to imagine what some sea of green screens will eventually turn into. Nope, but the actors just open their eyes and they are in the North Pole. They are in the world of Avatar. Here are some more leaked set photos. While LED stages are a revolutionary technology, they are not the end-all be-all of filmmaking. And they are still relatively new, so innovative directors are having to lay the groundwork and determine what the best practices are. While the Mandalorian and the Batman used their volume to critical acclaim, some other virtual productions like Obi-Wan Kenobi's left a bit more to be desired. According to some film critics, the allure of the volume's capabilities can cause some production crews to pay less attention to filmmaking fundamentals like practical lighting and interesting camera angles. That neglect will ultimately still result in a subpar product. So the variety we see in these leaked photos is pretty cool. They show that even though the Avatar team has this record-breaking technology at their disposal, they're not too vain to touch grass and use traditional set-building methods when deemed more advantageous. And they're not letting the volume stifle their creativity either. One of the Netflix Avatar directors recently contributed to the student filmmaker magazine by describing how he shot the opening scene of the upcoming live-action show. I'm not gonna read through all of this because it has a ton of nerdy filmmaking jargon, but the basic idea is that the director Michael Goy combined a bunch of new and old techniques and equipment to make Avatar's opening canoe scene work in an innovative way. Here is an extremely low res mockup of what was described made by Avatar News and confirmed to be accurate by the director himself. There is one more set leak at the end of this video, but this next one is by far my personal favorite. Look at that Water Tribe costume. Look how freaking blue it is. Look how bright it is. Look how insanely accurate it is when compared to the original clothing in the cartoon. I for one am tired of live action always translating to dull, washed out, realistic color palettes. So now I'm excited to introduce you to Avatar's lead costume designer, Farnaz Kaki Siddiq. Farnaz is a veteran designer whose work has been recognized by the Emmys on several occasions, including in 2013 when she won the award for best costume design all the way up to her most recent Emmy nomination in 2021. She also happens to be an avid Avatar fan. It literally is my dream job, so I can't wait I've for everybody good, to get to see it. about this version as opposed to the previous one they did. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> Farnaz gets even more interesting because she has a public Pinterest account, which is essentially a glorified online photo album. One of her saved photo galleries is straight up called Character Inspiration, and it was last updated nine months ago when they were still in the middle of filming. We're all super nosy, so while you peek at some of the very same pieces that inspired Avatar's lead designer, I'll play a clip of Farnaz describing her experience working on the show. It's a fan favorite. It's one of my favorites. I'm a huge fan of the show, and to actually have a chance to work on it, it's been an unbelievable experience for me. Every time that, um, you know, we create something and we'll see it in the fitting or we'll see it on camera, I kind of shed a tear here and there for it because I'm like, I can't believe it's actually happening. It's been an amazing journey so far and I really can't wait for everyone to get to see it because I think it's going to look fantastic. While filming, Farnaz showed off her affinity for bright fabrics in an Instagram post, and these materials help reinforce this live-action avatar's commitment to ethnic authenticity, with Farnaz clearly having sourced them from South Asian cultures, which were the inspiration for some Earth Kingdom characters like Bumi or Guru Patik. Speaking of Bumi, which by the way literally translates to Earth in Sanskrit, this is the actor who's playing him, Utkarsh Ambudkar. Now I already know what you're thinking, that guy is way too smoking hot to be playing King Boomy. Oh, and he's also way too young. I guess. Bumi was like 112 in the cartoon, and Utkarsh is 39, so how can this work? Well, you have to remember that despite being a centenarian, Bumi was one of the most physically fit and active characters in the entire series, so casting a younger, buff dude was the smartest choice. To make sure he looks the part though, Utkarsh had to endure sitting in a makeup chair for 6 hours each day he was on set, and last year he actually posted a pretty intense time lapse of himself getting measured for prosthetics. Every prosthetic-related look starts with life cast. 
Kevin didn't need prosthetics for their entire bodies. Instead, only the actors' heads and arms were covered in purple and green silicone rubbers. The impressions are then wrapped in temporary plaster to hold them together before being cast in hydrocal and urethane. The life casts also help Kevin find and exaggerate wrinkles already forming on their faces and forearms. We know that this exhaustive procedure wasn't even that uncommon for this Avatar live-action cast, even when aging up wasn't necessary. Danny Putty, for example, also mentioned having to wear prosthetics for his character transformation into the mechanist. And even actors like Paul Sung Kyung Lee, who already looks like the perfect rendition of a real life Uncle Iroh, had to spend over an hour prepping each day. I think everybody's confusing the fact that I'm growing stuff out and oh, your beard and stuff looks awesome. This is not the look at all for Iroh, which is when you see it, you will understand that because it is spectacular. Uh, and this is not anywhere close to it. Whatever people are imagining, it's gonna be a hundred times better. 100% guaranteed. Executive producer and showrunner Albert Kim tweeted that he's never worked on a project where people cried when they saw themselves in full costume. And according to several onset leakers, the costumes look just like those in the cartoon but brought to life. These are some fan-made renders showing what that could potentially look like. But obviously, the actual production has way more resources at their disposal to make everyone look even better. Oh man, I, I wish I could... I am dying to share what Kiyoshi looks like. Mm. <laughs> they did not skimp out on any aesthetics. By now, I've hopefully convinced you that the show's budget, production, and wardrobes are wildly impressive. So next, I'm going to talk about the Oscar-winning VFX studios and the world-renowned martial artists who are working on season one of Netflix's live-action Avatar series. For some inexplicable reason, people have convinced themselves that it's impossible to make bending look good in live-action. This is a silly assumption for a whole bunch of reasons. The first is that learning how to render realistic elemental graphics is literally taught in VFX 101. And I do mean literally. I looked up the curriculum and the syllabus. Making bending look cool is far from an insurmountable challenge, and we can't keep letting Shyamalan convince us that it was. These are clips from an Avatar fan film made by J&J &J Studios. Their budget was $10,000 or 0.06% of the budget of one of Netflix's Avatar episodes. Yet they still look freaking amazing. So imagine the potential of a literal 1,000 times multiplier. These clips show off the work of Arco May another Avatar fan and amateur VFX artist on YouTube. And in my opinion, they basically already look perfect, despite having a budget of zero dollars and being worked on by one single dude. Arco made literally filmed this in his basement while holding flashlights. And he said that he was learning the VFX techniques on the fly. Not to undercut his achievements at all, because they clearly speak for themselves, but as I said, moving the elements around nowadays is literally how people learn special effects fundamentals. It's like the lightsaber effect at this point. Anyone can figure it out with enough hard work and passion. So call me crazy for having faith that Avatar's industry leading VFX teams can pull this off. As we speak, the world's most talented artists are crafting the Four Nations. Netflix's Avatar is collaborating with a bunch of specialty VFX houses that are lending their expertise for very niche assignments. Some are working on the volume, for example, while others specialize in previs or simulated clashing armies. However, the main visual effects studio working on the live action Avatar is Deneg, and they are the seven times Oscar winning certified best special effects artist in the world. Deneg has an extremely impressive track record, and I wanted to check out some of their movies, but I discovered that none of them are available in the US version of Netflix. Fortunately, using today's sponsor Atlas VPN, I can change my online location and gain full access to the global Netflix library. While I show off some of DNX work, I'm going to demonstrate how you too can use Atlas VPN to watch each movie while also protecting your online activity. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your internet traffic and keeps all your data private. It hides your IP address and protects you from hackers, malware, and your internet service provider who, by the way, can see all of your online activity even when you use incognito mode. Atlas VPN puts a stop to that nonsense. It makes it so that the only person who can access your data is you. Atlas VPN also unlocks the full internet, allowing you to search websites from anywhere in the world. Streaming services like Netflix and Disney have different content available for different countries. For example, DNEG did the VFX for Interstellar, but it's impossible to stream that movie in the US. However, by using Atlas VPN, you can easily change your location to Italy and stream in 4K and with zero lag. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge 83% off discount. It lets you get a three-year subscription for just $183 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This is the best VPN deal on the market, 
to protect yourself and unlock the internet by clicking the link in the description below. And now let's get back to Avatar's VFX Studio and their most recent visual effects masterpiece, Dune. No company has won more Academy Awards for best visual effects than DNEG, and they took home both of the most recent year's Oscars back to back. Oh, and DNEG also did the effects for Stranger Things Season 4. Saying they're the best in the world is nearly an objective fact, so I have full confidence in their ability to make some realistic water ghost splish splash. While real life earth and fire bending are similarly easy to imagine, live action air bending is a bit more challenging. The main issue with air is that it is invisible. Duh. So they'll have to be slightly creative when choosing how it's depicted in the Netflix live action. Recently in the Marvel movie Chong chi there was one fight scene that Avatar fans instantly gravitated to due to its allusion to realistic airbending. Like this looks perfect, and I think Avatar fans would be more than happy if the Netflix show's airbending took notes from these scenes, or even beyond them honestly because the entire Chong chi movie is filled with incredibly epic and satisfying fight choreography. Despite its flaws, Chong chi reminded us how awesome a fight scene can be when you cut back the noise and focus on the fundamentals. These fights look so good because the actors were specifically trained by traditional martial arts masters, and those same masters also helped design the fight scenes to make sure they looked authentic. Alan Tang was the fight instructor who oversaw Chong Chi's production, and now he's in that exact same role for Netflix's live action avatar. Alan is a Wing Chun master and a Wushu world champion. He has decades of experience training both Hollywood actors like Chong Chi's Simu Liu and also Olympic champions as Canada's national team coach. Coach. This guy is legit, and he was literally at the director's right hand making sure Shang Chi's fights looked as awesome as possible. So it's no wonder that Netflix tapped him to do the same thing for Avatar. Getting the martial arts right is critical if this adaptation is to be successful. In the original cartoon, bending is an almost flawless magical combat system. The reason that it works so well is because it's so grounded in reality. Each element is based on a different, very specific real life martial art discipline. Fire bending is based on the aggressive and dynamic Northern Shadow. Style. Earthbending is based on the powerfully rooted Hungar. Waterbending is based on Tai Chi and the deliberate redirection of energy. And airbending is based on Bagua Zhang, which emphasizes constant circular movement. The original Avatar team was so committed to getting the martial arts right that they would actually have their fighting instructor, Shifu Kinzu, do the fight choreography in real life before tracing his body movements for the actual animation. Like, people who don't believe bending can work in live action just don't understand that bending, these moves, were already based on real life. And by Having Alan Tang there to train the Netflix cast and help design the fight scenes, they're ensuring that Bending's original inspirations are withstanding the conversion into live action. But it's not solely up to Alan, the cast and stunt crews have to be excellent too. Luckily, many of the young actors already have extensive martial arts backgrounds alongside their acting portfolios. Pretty soon I'll make an entire video breaking down this amazing cast, so subscribe so you don't miss that, but for right now let's just look at some highlights. Dallas Liu, the actor playing Zuko, is just a badass, straight up. My man doesn't even need a stunt double, he looks like he was born ready to fight. And judging from this video from when he was 10, like, he might have been. Ian Ousley, the live action Sokka, is another standout martial arts wise. He's been competing in Taekwondo since he was a kid, so I'm sure that Alan Tang's training is coming naturally to him as well. But beyond the actor's capabilities, we know that the core parts of the fight scenes will mostly come down to the stunt team. And that brings us back to the Toph short film that I showed at the beginning of this video. The Netflix live action stunt team is the real deal. Not only are they super talented, but they are also clearly huge Avatar fans. Reminder that these guys directed, produced, and did the VFX for this Toph concept fight during their free time. So their day job was fighting in the Avatar Netflix show, and they loved it so much that they spent their weekends making an Avatar fan film for free. That's the level of passion that can't be faked. This stunt team's work is the icing on top of the visually spectacular cake that will be the first season of Netflix's live action Avatar series. There is one final leaked photo that I'm going to show you as a special treat for making it to the end of the video. Here is your first, very blurry, very pixelated look at Gordon Cormier as Avatar Aang, The Last Airbender. I know you were all curious, and I was too, but I can now confirm that Aang's arrows will be blue. Solid blue, allegedly with more intricate, smaller designs within the arrows, kind of blending the previous live action's approach with that of the cartoon. Shout out to the Reddit user Sad Girl Summer for finding this leak as well as info on a ton of other topics I discussed in this video. Like, she found 
found this photo of Gordon on the edge of some random extra's Instagram account. That's some FBI levels of detective work right there. The last thing I'll say is that, of course, despite all of these great signs, I cannot guarantee this show will live up to the cartoon. The only singular red flag throughout this entire production was the original Avatar creators leaving the Netflix project in 2020. But know that the live action they were working on and the one that we're getting are two completely separate shows. The scripts, the production, the incredible cast, these are all new things that came with the new showrunner Albert Kim. So don't begrudge this Avatar series due to whatever mistakes existed with the previous two live action attempts. This one lives or dies on its own. Obviously, I'm very optimistic and I hope that when we see that first trailer, probably sometime this spring, that this video doesn't get tweeted out by the things that aged poorly account. But until then, I'll keep huffing copium and I'll leave you with these final words by the live action Uncle Iroh. Everybody's super excited about it and I am too and I can't wait till we're able to share more footage, more information with you. Uh, somebody leaked photographs of Avatar, like the set in the volume online. I saw that. And uh, I tell you, that's not even a tenth, not even a tenth of the awesomeness that is out there. It's going to be something special. So 